Hey everybody, it's the coach. This is a special edition of the Divisional Round Playoffs on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a great one on tap between the Seattle Seahawks and the Green Bay Packers. I'll join you again at halftime to look at some of these stats and scores from earlier this afternoon. But for now, it's Sunday Night Football. And on the call, as always, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, the playoffs are back at Lambeau, and the Timps, well, they're where you would expect them in the frigid range, just how the cheeseheads like it here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Ahead, we'll decide the second entrant to next week's NFC title game as we've got a great one in store between the Seattle Seahawks and the Green Bay Packers. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. And final ticket to the conference championship round. We'll know soon enough as we are underway here on a January afternoon. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. See Russell Wilson bringing out the Seattle Seahawks here. Uh, Russell Wilson, you know, it's probably Lamar Jackson's MVP trophy, but he's still down there on the ballot with consideration, quietly having one of his finest seasons ever. He should wind up coming close to his career high in touchdown passes, which was 35 from a year ago. Interceptions, Charles, still amazingly low. He'll likely finish single digits for the second straight season. Yeah, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Because during this holiday season, you know what he's like? He's like your go-to Christmas gift that you, you know you're going to love and you absolutely have to have it. But at the same time, there's always that shiny new thing that comes along, right? Every year there's a new thing that hits. Lamar Jackson does that and takes the award away likely because I do think that ultimately Lamar Jackson wins it. But when you look at it, you're wondering, how does Russell Wilson not win it? And we talk about that year in and year out with his dependability. Third play of this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. They'll run it. Here's Lynch. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. Defense had a chance to get off the field here in the opening drive, couldn't do it. I know that we go into these meetings with coaches and sometimes maybe we can get, you know, a little bit numb because they're always going to talk about how important third down is, aren't they? Offense and defense. In this case, one capitalized and the other, as you said, had a chance to get off the field and didn't get it done. So after the run by Lynch, here's another first and ten. They go play action with Wilson. He lets it fly for Lockett. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. And we'll take a look at the starters here defensively for the Packers. And they were very strong in that victory from a week ago. It's a little bit enlightening talking with the defensive coordinator about their performance last mm -hmm. week because his feeling was good, solid performance, did what they needed to do to get the job done and get the win, but definitely would like to see some improvement in this week's game. They always want improvement, don't they? They certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> On second down, Lynch. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. <laughs> on third down, Wilson. Open man is Jacob Hollister. And he gets it just shy of midfield, but that's not enough. He's short of the marker. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. On fourth down, ready to punt Michael Dixon. Tyler Irvin back deep. 
And he'll send this one into the cold Lambeau night. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Aaron Rodgers getting set to lead the Green Bay Packers offensively. Is it fair to say, Charles, that Rodgers has quietly had another sensational season? I mean, you compare him with some of the other quarterbacks in the league, he just does not throw interceptions. I think what people miss, and this is just my own opinion, not only does he not throw interceptions, he doesn't turn the ball over in the pocket with a lot of fumbles, but people often equate with guys who don't throw a lot of interceptions with simply dinkers and dunkers throwing the football. Aaron Rodgers is anything but that. And when he, when he gets outside the pocket, he's not taking the five-yard check down. He wants that 50-yard throw downfield. He throws to hurt a defense. So when you put it all together, doesn't throw interceptions, yet wants to push the ball downfield, it's even more remarkable because going into the Chicago game in week 15, he had gone 200, 232 straight passes without throwing an interception heading into that game. That's pretty phenomenal. Now on second and 13, Rodgers, and that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. And now the offensive starters for the Packers. It's tough to be an offensive lineman in Green Bay because their quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, knows how to keep plays alive and often extends them for three, four, five, six seconds. But David Bakhtiari, his left tackle, he does it as well as anyone could ever expect. Excellent footwork, knows it. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 48, and he'll take it across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. Oh, and that's a nice job defensively to get a piece of the football. He's going to pop it into the air, and then it's the tip drill. And good concentration by him to react to it and pull in the interception. Seahawks back out of the field here, getting set for their next drive. You know, this is a team that great record this year, double digits and wins again, but they have played a lot of close games in 2019, haven't they? They think it's character building, and they think it's going to serve them well come the cauldron of the playoffs. That when you play those intense games, those close games, they've been there before. Look at them. They beat the Steelers by two. They beat the Bengals by one on opening day. How about the game against the Browns? Just by four or against them on the road. A field goal better than the Niners in overtime. So they've been there. They understand it. There's an author named Angela Duckworth who wrote a book called Grit a few years ago. Pete Carroll, the head coach, really bought into that and that idea of having a gritty, tough team. And we've seen evidence of it in 2019. That's a great point, though. Come playoff time, if it's a one-score game down the stretch, they're not going to be daunted. Now Wilson. And he's got his tight end. This is Luke Wilson. No catches for him in the wild card win last week, but he's got a first quarter grab here. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Zadarius Smith leading the surge there as he drops him for a loss of six. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all, because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. But you take a big sack, it could push you out of range. And that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because 
this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. On comes the Seahawk kicker here on fourth down. It's Jason Myers from the right hash. This from 48. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up. And it's weaving through traffic. And now he's free. Pass the 20. And they will score. It's a Packer touchdown. In for the score. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. And all the pressure that goes on in these playoffs. But the first score here in the divisional round always very key. Partner, this team handled it like it was a regular season game. That they were confident in what they were doing. Came right out and established themselves early. On is Mason Crosby for the point after. And it's good to make it 7 0 Packers. Now, after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. They trail here early in this division round game as they seek a spot in the NFC title bout. Wilson, the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. They start the drive with Lynch. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21 yard line. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. Drive loss four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. On second down now, it's Lynch. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. Big Dwayne Brown, the tackle, guilty there. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Following the penalty, Ledge. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone, following a pickup of about seven or eight. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes, the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. Going for Metcalf. Oh, he tries to get it to Metcalf, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Jair Alexander. And they will be set up now as he brings this thing all the way back inside the 20. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down a score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. Packers getting ready to go back at it offensively. We talked earlier about Aaron Rodgers and another sensational season for him. Look, what was weird the last two years was looking at the playoff picture without the Green Bay Packers. Well, they're going to be back playing meaningful football this January. Double digits and wins again. And I think for Matt LaFleur, if there was a rookie coach of the year, he'd certainly be in line for that award. And he should be in line for the award just to be coach of the year. Remember, his team didn't make the playoffs last year. So much discussion in the offseason. Would he mesh with his quarterback, Aaron Rodgers? And how would a young, excuse me, a young coach like him take over a team and guide that locker room. Well, heading into the down stretch of this. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. From 
17 yards out. And the Packers are able to stretch that lead out further. The defense is doing their best, but they're struggling right now. They'll look for some help from their own offense to keep them in the game. Point try now for Crosby. And it's good to make it 14 0. They had the short field and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. Now, after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. This is taken at his four. A marker down. He does get it up past the 25. Will it hold? Let's see. Face mask. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't Let's matter go. anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage from the shotgun. Wilson. That's complete to DK Metcalf. Last week in the wild card win, he had seven catches. That's his first one here. Now a play fake here on first down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. They'll run to Marshawn Lynch. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. First and second down were a disaster. Both went backwards. Now it's third and 18. They need something big. There's Wilson to throw. And well, the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. They wind up getting 16, but even that's not quite enough. It's fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. For the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. He had his lone attempt blocked earlier. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up. A live ball here, remember. Oh, those really long field goals, when they are made, they are things of beauty. But there is a danger to getting them started, isn't there? Yeah, with that low drive, you've got to really keep it low to the ground, don't you, to get that distance. Yeah, hard to just pop it up in the air because otherwise it's not going to get there. So he's got to drive it low in order to have the distance, and that usually puts it in jeopardy, gives him a chance to block it, and everyone knows it on the other side. That's when you get your best jumpers on the other side of the field and try and get up and get it. So now a chance for points in the opposite direction after the blocked field goal. They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag. But you caused the play. You did it. I had to. 
After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and 10. Here we go, here we go. 58. After the penalty, it's Jones. He gets it forward for four, maybe five, but the flags fly. And this one could be coming back. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. From the gun, it's Rodgers. That's caught by Geronimo Allison. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. 157 to go in this first half on EA Sports. We remind you, as we've done all year, that coming up at halftime, we will visit with Jonathan Coachman standing by in Orlando. He'll let you know what's going on here. A very eventful divisional round weekend. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 22-yard line. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now it's Rodgers. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 31. Muhammad Wilkerson sacks him that time, coming in off the edge. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Geronimo Allison, the intended target, and it's third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. A throw caught by Kumaro. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more. And he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. Alan Lazard, two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Packers are able to stretch that lead out further. A lot of people might call this backyard football. Sometimes just understanding who you've got out wide and who you're going to throw it to. Give him an opportunity to go up and make a play, even when contested. Looks like that one worked out pretty well. The trust factor, in effect. Now Crosby for the point after. And it is now 21 to nothing. A drive that time of six plays. And it ends with a Packers touchdown. the touchdown here's Crosby to kick it away this fielded at the two and he'll take this across the 25 couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line Here's Russell Wilson and the Seahawk offense now getting set to go again. If second quarter, they're down big already. He's struggling as well. They've got to find something here. He's got to find something on this drive. And sometimes you take on all that extra pressure on yourself and maybe you have to disperse it a little bit. Lean on some other people, lean on your teammates. Find someone who can take the pressure off and get the ball in their hands for a while. Or this, if he doesn't, this is getting out of hand, or it could get worse. They'll keep it on the ground again here. And down right around the 
32 yard line, four yards on the pickup. So we've come upon halftime here in this NFC Divisional Round matchup. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in a minute. But first, time to give the folks at home a look at what's going on around the NFL. We'll begin out west. At and okay, so much for our halftime break. Apparently, we're going to get right back to it. A trip to the NFC title game hanging in the ballot. Second half action back underway. This one taken just inside the 10. Solid return. Pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. So out now comes the offense back onto the field. And they have made this look easy. And there's not supposed to be anything easy about the NFL playoffs, but this lead, yes, they're at home, but this has been impressive. And we hear all the time when upsets happen, teams go on the road, that maybe home field advantages and all it's cracked up to be. But you and I both, the Red Sea parts, and there he goes. And he finally goes down at the 23-yard line. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Shotgun now for Rodgers. Open here is Allison. That's complete. And he is out of bounds, but first he gets it inside the 10 to the 7. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. Shotgun now for Rodgers. This is caught. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. Second and goal from the one. To throw is Rodgers. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Geronimo Allison the target there, but now it's third and goal. I can't imagine we'd see another throw here. Third and goal from the one. Rodgers to throw once more. And he's going to be swallowed up and taken down. Sacked back at the five-yard line. Unable to stop K.J. right there as he slips by for the sack. I think normally we would talk about this more with basketball players and football players, but let's adopt it in this case. He's a stat sheet stuffer. Had the interception earlier, now a sack. But he just needs a touchdown for the trifecta. That's about all he needs, and he's going to go for it. Now, meanwhile, they go for it on fourth down, and my goodness, incomplete. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. Second down and four. Wilson. He's going to get this out to Marshawn Lynch. And he'll get it up to the 12-yard line here. Call it a one-yard gain on the play. And that's going to lead to a third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the pistol, they run with Lynch. And he will have the first down here as he's up to the 15. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. Hey, hey, 
They run again on first down Lynch. And not much there at all. He's up only to about the 16-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. I'm going back to you. I'm going back to you. This is Lynch on the draw. And that closed up quickly there as he gets it up only to about the 17. Back-to-back one-yard runs here, so that leaves him with a third down and eight. To throw on third down, Wilson going for Metcalf. It got his man complete. And they do finally get him down, but not before he reaches the 41. Obviously, they're not where they want to be right now on the scoreboard. Big plays like that, though, that'll trend them in the right direction. Yeah, a few more like that, they'll be right back in the game. And if they can continue to do that, maybe they'll inspire their defense as well. They'll get a few stops. So the big play gets them across midfield now for first and 10. They'll run this with Homer. They're able to push forward for about four down to the 37. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Defense. A little eager there coming in from his outside linebacker position. You think the hard count Still got him there? Yes. Maybe that extra hut, you know, that, that extra emphasis on it. Got him to jump, and they picked up five yards. So after the penalty, now they need just a yard on second down. Wilson. That's caught by Hollister. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Jacob Hollister. 32 yards, and the Seahawks were able to close the gap just a bit. That's a score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are, but sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard and you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Jason Myers now for the extra point. It's up, it's good, and that'll cut the lead to 21-7. to seven. So that drive goes eight plays, and the Seahawks capping it off with a touchdown. This one taken just inside the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And last time, they had it fourth and goal, rolled the dice, didn't get it. Now they've got to put that behind them, try to put together another drive. A simple tip of the cap, a nod of the head to the defense. Congratulations, you got us last time. But you didn't hold us the whole time. We got down to position. We were able to be in position to score. Let's go ahead and attack again. Continue to have that kind of confidence. Not worry about the one play that didn't allow them to get into the end zone. And this time they'll be trying to get it into the end zone. We'll see what they do. On second and 11 now. Rodgers, and this is caught. It's Jimmy Graham. His first reception of the divisional round matchup, but it's good for a first down as well. One quarter remains for a trip to the NFC title game. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Rodgers now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. Working from the gun. Rodgers. And that's complete to Adams. Touchdown, Packers. Devontae Adams, 55 yards. And the Packers are able to stretch that lead out further. And right now, Charles, I think you'd have to say their class starting to show through. Yeah, they were disappointed not to get the number one seed in the playoffs, but the reality is these guys can play anywhere. It doesn't matter for them. And if they can indeed hold on to this lead, that's going to set up one heck 
of a championship game next Sunday. Let's come back and watch it, shall we? I, something tells me you and I are going to be there. Extra point try now for Crosby. He knocks it through. It's 28-7. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And the result, a Green Bay score. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. This is taken at his four. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Now it's Wilson. And now another turnover as this one's intercepted. Picked off by Tremont Williams. And he'll return it to the 24-yard line. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, this point on the clock, had to throw it. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. We'll I love we'll it. Let's see if they dial it up this drive. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Now it looks like we'll get a timeout, and we will. We've got an injured Packer on the field. We'll check on his status when we get back. They'll try and run. This is Williams. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. Taking it in from seven yards away. And his guys capitalize on the short field as they take it in for six. Sometimes a group that gets overlooked, certainly, the offensive line. Right there, they really helped with that score. Didn't they tell us in our meeting that when we score touchdowns, running the ball, that means the offensive line actually scored first by moving people back beyond the end zone. We saw evidence of that on that play. Crosby connects on the extra point, and that'll increase their lead to 28. The drive there only spanning three plays. And in the end, it's capped off by a seven-yard run. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. This is taken at his four. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Here we go. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. 
Now Lynch, he's got it on the draw. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. The Seahawks on third down. They've hit at 50%, three and six to this point. This will be third and six. From the gun, it's Wilson. They're able to locate Wilson. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Two catches now in this divisional round matchup. That one, a first down. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do, you got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end, take some easier completions. Yeah, interception last drive. There he hits the reliable target. Wilson now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. To throw is Wilson. He finds Lynch. It's complete. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Now Wilson. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. And the Seahawks on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and eight. Let them know, let them know. From midfield now, here's Wilson. Yeah, that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Just nothing there again. He's been sacked multiple times. We've seen the interceptions, of course. Uh, he's really been through the ringer, hasn't he? And what we've seen is a defense that's well-coordinated. The front and the back really in sync. The front putting on the pressure. The backside being ball hawks and picking passes off. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll kick it away for the second time. Well, this is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. We got this. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. And this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. When, when do you go to the backup? Let him get some time. And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just going to tell you, in the 2015 season, I commentated on three games in a row that were blowouts. And in none of them did the starting quarterback ever come out of the game for the team that had a big lead. And in each instance, I asked the coaches later on, why didn't you do that? And they all looked at me and said, just don't really do that in the NFL. We, we, you know, these guys play, and we just play them all the way through. Now, in certain situations, they, they will take them out. But for the most part, they're not as worried and concerned about getting them out of the game. And that's always puzzled me a little bit. He's got the hook up to Lazard. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. An excellent gain, 35 yards. Boy, another big play late here for an offense, Charles. It certainly has had its fair share of big plays. Coverage has been a problem all game long. And I would say that going along with that has been confidence. Because even if they had the right coverage, they've still dented them. And now it's been a real issue for them during this game. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 13 yards, first down Packers. Another example of this offense really having their way, Charles, and another big chunk play there on the ground. And when you look at the defense, they've got to do a much better job of wrapping up when they tackle. A lot of great opportunities continue to slip through their fingers, as do the runners.
And they have secured a spot in the conference championship. And now you can start to smell it at this point in the season, can't you? You really can because the focus has been one game at a time, not looking ahead. But when you get to the conference championship game and you know you're there, the Super Bowl does loom in the future. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Packers are winners here as we say so long from Lambeau.